In this film, you will see the view from the cab of one of the southern region's new electric locomotives. It shows modernization work in progress along part of the line from Victoria to Ramsgate. The locomotive speed is slow in order to give you a chance of seeing the work better. We are approaching Beckenham Junction Station, and on the left, you can see the new signal box, which will replace this old one just beyond it. The new box will be one of eight, replacing 28 between Victoria and Ramsgate, in connection with the installation of colour light signalling. We are now approaching Shortlands Junction, where a considerable remodelling of the permanent way has taken place in order to be able to deal more efficiently with trains to and from Victoria and Hoburn and the Catford Loop. At present, there are conflicting movements across the junction, but this will be avoided with the new layout, as the Victoria lines will be one pair and the Catford Loop lines another pair. On the left is another of the new signal boxes. These are the Catford Loop lines on the left. We are about to pass over a bridge which has virtually been reconstructed. It has been lifted in order to give the standard clearance for road traffic underneath. But as it is so near Shortland Station, this has involved raising the platforms. Here is the bridge, and just beyond are the platforms. This edge has already been lifted, and the middle of the platform, seen here, is at a lower level. The semaphore signal on the left is the one at present in use, and the apparatus to the right of it is the casing for the new colour light signalling of the new installation. This is Bromley South Station, and over the bridge you can see the partially demolished roof of the old booking office, which is being entirely reconstructed. The platform roofing and waiting rooms are also being rebuilt. And the two towers are the start of a new footbridge to connect the two island platforms. This has become necessary as, in the new arrangement, the two left-hand lines will be from and to the Catford Loop, and the two right-hand ones from and to Victoria, so that passengers changing trains will often need to change platforms. We are now approaching a complicated area of junctions and flyovers. The two tracks diverging to the right go to Orpington, Tunbridge, Dover, and carry the main boat trains. These two in front of us go to Ramsgate, and you will see on either side a level strip of ground covered with ballast. On each of these, an additional track will be placed, so that this two-line route will be a four-line route to deal with the additional trains resulting from electrification. Bridge alterations have, of course, also been necessary. In order to improve alignment and to avoid disturbing property unnecessarily outside the old railway boundary, both the new lines are sometimes on one side and sometimes on the other. Here we are approaching a seaboard, which indicates to the drivers where a speed restriction starts. These temporary speed restrictions are necessary wherever the tracks are put in a temporary position. You will observe here an additional rail in the middle of the track. 
This is a heavier conductor rail than the one which is in use at the moment on this route. It weighs 150 pounds per yard and will replace the old standard one of 100 pounds in order to be able to carry the additional electricity for heavier, faster and more trains. Here once more we are gradually moving over to the left. You can see the new track first on the left and then on our right. The lines we are following will eventually be cut in two and slewed over to join to those on either side and so complete the four track route. This is the nearly reconstructed St Mary Cray station. Originally it had two platforms with tracks in between. Now it consists of two island platforms to deal with four tracks. New booking office facilities are above us at road level. The bridge we are about to go over has had to be widened to take the additional tracks which are here seen on our right. And in the near distance on the right is the parapet of St Mary Cray Viaduct, a brick arch 55 feet high under the railway. Here is one of several reconstructed road bridges of a rather pleasing design. The original one was built for two tracks and was demolished and cleared away in one night with the use of explosives after the roadway and filling had been removed. We are now approaching another bridge which has had to be widened in order to take the four tracks in place of two. The new tracks on our right are here ballasted and nearly ready for traffic. Once more, we are moving over to the right. In order to pass over the widened portion of this bridge under the railway, so that the old portion on our left can be reconstructed to the new level without traffic passing over it, interfering with the work. This is once more of necessity, a place where temporary speed restrictions have to be enforced. And this T-board we are approaching indicates to the driver where the speed restriction finishes. Here is Swanley Station, which being a new one shortly before the war, has not had to be modified radically, although the platforms have been extended to deal with longer trains. The widening finishes here. The line going off on our left is the one to Ramsgate, and we are following the one to Otford and Maidstone. Just outside the goods shed in the distance, you can see a wagon loaded with a gantry, which is one of the new signal gantries to take the color light system.